If you were to tell me before I got pregnant that I was going to have a baby at a birth center instead of a hospital, I would not have believed you. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about birth center versus hospital and why I chose to have Lincoln in the birth center. I know this is a touchy subject for a lot of people because birth is something that a lot of people get offended about or they're disappointed about their birth or they feel like you know it's like breastfeeding versus bottle feeding or c-section versus vaginal or epidural versus no epidural and so I think this video really deserves a disclaimer at the beginning. I am not here to put down c-sections. I'm not here to put down anybody who's had an epidural before. I'm not here to put down anybody who's had their baby in the hospital. I think in the end there is a place for medical intervention. There is a time for doctors to step in. I would start off right now. I know that. I understand that and I think that's truth. I think that there is a time and place for medical intervention where birth is concerned. This video is pertaining to low risk pregnancies that have no complications. The baby and the mom don't have any health issues that will be in danger to their pregnancy. That being said, let's jump right into this. Birth center births are not for everybody. If you're going to be laboring in a birth center with the fear that what if something goes wrong, then maybe you should just have hospital birth for a just in case, you know? Because if that's what you value, a just in case, I want somebody there just in case something goes wrong, then have a hospital birth because that's what that is. For me, I believe birth is a natural thing. So often it gets treated like a medical emergency, a low risk natural birth you do not need IVs you do not need to be in the hospital bed being monitored 24 7 this is a natural thing that our bodies do granted again I'm not gonna give this disclaimer for every single one of my points but there are medical reasons when your baby needs to be monitored 24 7 there are medical reasons why you need to be in the hospital with doctors around you there are so many things so many reasons that you should be in a hospital for your birth but for in low risk pregnancy you don't need to be in a hospital for that they treat it like a medical emergency when it's something that our bodies do naturally and i think that we need to <laughs> i think we need to get back there and just accept that this is not a freak out moment. He was cuddling with me. Oh yeah, show everyone your black eye. So I'm talking about what's best for your baby and my baby has a black eye. I'm sorry if this discredits me. If you value family-centered birth, where they value your opinion, you value low intervention, low medical intervention, all that stuff, then maybe a birth center is for you. Those are gonna be my reasons why I chose the birth center because that's what I valued. Let's get right into this. The biggest probably reason that I had my baby in a birth center was because unnecessary doctor intervention. I had so many friends, pretty much everyone I know, pretty much everyone I know who had a birth in a hospital, at least the hospital around here, again, disclaimer, all hospitals are different, you gotta know what yours hospital is like. They had unnecessary doctor intervention, which means the doctor was, their shift was gonna be up in two hours, so they um, broke their waters. They were tired and they wanted to go home, and so they gave them Pitocin. They went in for their appointment a week before their due date and they swept their membranes. Those are all unnecessary doctor interventions that put you at an increased rate for infection, an increased rate for C-section, and let me tell you, I didn't want infection, I didn't want C-section, I didn't want Pitocin, I didn't want unnecessary doctor intervention because the doctor was in patient or the doctor wanted to go home. Anything the doctor does that intervenes he puts you at a higher risk for a C-section. And I really want to focus on the word unnecessary. I really want to focus on the word unnecessary doctor intervention because sometimes it is necessary doctor intervention. Sometimes the doctors are like, you're headed straight for a C-section. I'm going to give you Pitocin to try to speed things along so we don't have to do a C-section. That does happen, guys. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. Your doctor knows what's best for your baby. And I hope, I hope, I hope they value 
hands-off labor. What I saw in my community, in the hospital, in our town, they do not. I guess I could name off so many. I have a friend whose labor wasn't progressing fast enough, so they gave her Pitocin and they used balloons to dilate her. Her labor hadn't even been like 20 hours yet. Labor so often can be upwards of 30 hours, guys. That is natural. My sister had her baby at the birth center. Her birth was over 30 hours. She did just fine, and her baby was healthy through the entire thing. Her baby is still healthy. No medical interventions whatsoever. The doctors did not get impatient and give her Pitocin, which made the contraction so much worse and the experience so much worse guys which I think if you get Pitocin then you're more likely to get an epidural which let's face it has more consequences and puts you at a higher risk for c-section guys I don't know I'm a big believer in no c-section because of the lack of medications used in medical interventions in a birth center their c-section rate is at 6% versus the hospitals whose c-section rate runs about 26% that's 20% more likely to have a c-section in a hospital than in a birth center okay Though, think about it, people who have high-risk pregnancies tend to have their babies in the hospital, which I think is a good decision, is the right decision. High-risk pregnancies are already more likely to have C-sections. So it's not all unnecessary C-sections, sometimes it is medically important, but I'm just saying those are the percentages, think about it. The first thing that drew me to a birth center, which is my third point, is they are family oriented. They really value the mom and the dad, the mom and dad's wishes and opinions, and they really value just family time, skin to skin contact right after birth. Um, whoever you want there, you can have there. After Lincoln was born, the first hour was pretty much just him and Brent and me. Of course that was after they made sure he was okay. They already had done the first assessments and everything. They made sure he was breathing okay. Obviously his safety comes first and then it was family time. There was no one asking me about insurance. There was no one asking me about anything else or checking him or rubbing him vigorously with all this crap. It was me and him and it was my husband and I. And then when they came back in to weigh him, to check all his reflexes, do that first assessment, give him his vitamin K shot, that was right there in our room on the bed with us and they didn't take him away. I was with him the whole time, which, hang on, I think the dog has to go potty. Okay. Where was I? Okay. So my baby was never like taken away from me. He was never in a different room. They did everything right there where I could see him, where I could be there with him. I really value that mom-baby bonding with the skin to skin right after birth, the nursing right away. Again, disclaimer guys, not all hospitals are like this. Some hospitals are really, really great. Some hospitals are just... They do the skin to skin. They don't take the baby away. You need to know your hospital in your area and what their policies are. What is the norm for them? It's not impossible to have a good birth in a hospital. It's just you have to fight and you have to advocate so much more for that. Another reason that I really like the birth center I went to is because they did delayed cord clamping. If you don't know what this is, I would really encourage you to look it up. It's not like the end of the world if your baby doesn't have delayed cord clamping. The whole point of it is that the placenta is an amazing organ and it is giving your baby blood, it is giving your baby energy and life and good things and hormones for your baby that's keeping your baby alive. If you just cut it off, there's so much nutrients and blood and things for your baby that he's missing out on or she, they're missing out on. So. Delayed cord clamping, they wait till the placenta has stopped pulsing. So that means it stops sending blood and oxygen to your baby. Mine, it didn't take that long. I don't know, it was like five minutes or something. Again, when you're in labor, all time is like totally like irrelevant. So I think it was around five minutes. It wasn't that long, but it gave my baby just that little bit more, just a little bit extra. And there's so many studies and research and people explaining all the benefits of that and if you want I can do another video on that but today I'm just gonna say that's something I valued that's what they did at the birth center and that's why I went there another thing around that which is number five for me was they did a delayed first bath 
So at the hospital, they usually bathe your baby the day of, the day after. I'm not even sure. They usually bathe your baby at the hospital. And I wanted a delayed bath. Again, research it. If you want another video done on this, I can. But the vernix that is on your baby when they are born is so good. It's hydrating. It's antibacterial. It's amazing. So I didn't want a bath right away. And the birth center agreed with that. And they did a delayed first bath. Actually, they didn't even give him a bath. I gave him a bath at home. But besides that point, that's another reason. Okay, next point. Birth centers are in general more private, which I liked because you're like sprawled everywhere. You're naked. You're like so vulnerable. You're giving birth. You're weak. You're in pain. The last thing you want are people you don't know as nurses or doctors or people you don't know in your room sharing a birth room with you. Like, I didn't want that. I'm sorry if you're cool with that. That's fine. Whatever. You can have a community birth. But for me, I was like, I like the privacy. In the birth center, you get your own room. It's a private room without having to pay more, without worrying without worrying if your insurance covers a private room or if you'll be stuck with a semi-private room. You get your own room and I knew every single person at my birth. I knew all of the midwives that were there and I knew all of the students. I loved everybody and they were so nice to me and I felt so comfortable. I knew them by name. I had seen them at my prenatal appointments and it was exactly what I wanted. That kind of comfortable, I knew everyone. I didn't feel like it was a super public event. It was so Nice. I'm gonna go let the dog in. <laughs> Number seven, I get a little bit passionate about. In the birth center, I could eat and I could drink while in labor. But if you have your baby in the hospital, once you're admitted, they will not let you eat, they will not let you drink, they will let you have ice chips. That is so stupid. You're in labor. This is the hardest thing you probably will ever do physically and they will not give you sustenance. They will not give you calories to give you energy. Why? because they're preparing for a c-section. What if she needs a c-section, the anesthesia, they don't want you to vomit, so they don't give you food. Guys, you're not eating for a 26% chance of a c-section. In the birth center, I was able to drink water, I was able to eat food, I kept my energy up. Granted, my labor was only like 13, 12 and a half, wait, 13 hours? Let me think. Yeah, 13 and a half hours and I was eating protein bars, I was staying hydrated, I was keeping my energy up. This is something that I think they really need to change in hospitals. I understand why they do it, but think about 100% of women cannot eat or drink. Only 26% chance that you're going to have a C-section. Out of those per that percentage of people that are having C-sections, you need to look up the chances of them vomiting under anesthesia. Okay, another reason why I absolutely loved the birth center is I could walk around. They do what's called intermittent fetal monitoring. They do what's called intermittent fetal monitoring, which means that you do not have stuff strapped to you 100% of the time. Again, disclaimer, some babies and moms need that continuous fetal monitoring. On a low-risk pregnancy like mine and so many others, it is not necessary. The birth center that I went to checked on me often. They checked on him. They made sure everything was going okay, and then they left me alone. I could walk around, I could be in the shower, I could be in whatever position I wanted to laboring. Again, this depends on your hospital. Some hospitals require you to be in bed on your back, which I think is like the worst thing in the world. No one wants to labor on your back. If you've been in labor, you know that that is definitely like the last position that you want to be in. A birth center, you can move around, you can walk around, you can do whatever you want. You labor in whatever position you want to. That will make your labor go faster because walking, moving, standing helps your baby descend. So it makes your labor go faster and it is way more comfortable pain management techniques. Not only that, is I could actually push my baby out in whatever position I wanted to pretty much. So at the hospital, when it comes time to push, you are put on your back, your legs are up in stirrups, and you're pushing that baby out like that. No questions asked. I think pretty much every hospital is the same regarding that. Guys, if you've been in labor, you know that that is so painful and it slows things, it slows things down. It's unnatural, it's unnatural. If you believe that birth is a natural thing that your body can do by itself, regarding any medical 
reasons not to, then you should be able to give birth. Hands and knees, guys, lowest percentage of tears on your hands and knees. So you can give birth, you can labor in whatever position you want, you can move around while laboring, but you could also push your baby out. Kneeling, hands and knees, sitting, whatever you want, squatting, it's up to you, it's what you feel is natural in your body, and again, if you believe that labor is a natural thing, that's something that you value. Another thing about the birth center is that you don't have to stay for 24 or 48 hours like you do in the hospital. Because there's less medical interventions, because there's less medications used, they don't have to monitor you as long. They have their checklist of things that need to happen before you leave. You know, they assess you as a mom, they assess you as the... They assess you as the mom, they assess the baby to make sure everyone's healthy, healing, you have to pee, they make sure your blood um, loss is contained, all this stuff, they make sure you're okay. You get to go home in like six to eight hours. You get to go home to your own bed, comfortable, and you get to shower if you want, you get to sleep in your own bed, you get to recover at home with your baby. A little part of me did want to stay longer because it was my first kid and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but my mom came home with me and that helped a lot. I wasn't just by myself. I had somebody there, but I was at home, comfortable. It was great. I kind of wish I could stay longer, but at the same time, I think that's a huge pro. I was not stuck at the hospital, feeling gross. I could just go home pretty quick after I had my baby. So that was awesome. While I'm filming this video, I feel like my dog and my baby are just like living freely. And so like I things are falling over and breaking, but they're fine. Another thing about going home sooner is that the cost of having a baby is less because if you stay longer, you have to pay for it. Which brings me to my next point, which is a huge one. It is so much cheaper to have your baby at a birth center than at a hospital. Hospitals are a rip off, guys. It can be lower end is like 10,000 and that's unheard of. You pay for the delivery, you pay for the aftercare, you pay for a blood bank even if you don't need blood, you pay for all of these things. Again, higher risk for C-section, you're gonna have to pay for the C-section, you're gonna have to pay for the Pitocin, you're gonna have to pay for all of the interventions that they give you. Guys, guess how much a birth center costs? A birth center costs around $3,000 to $4,000, give or take a little bit. Every birth center is different. You could pay for that out of pocket. I would like to say that a lot of insurances do not pay for a birth center birth. So, some of you guys are looking at an insurance covered hospital birth. It doesn't matter if it's $30,000. Either that or you'd have to pay out of pocket $3,000 or $4,000. If you don't have insurance, this is a perfect solution for that. I don't think I need to say anymore. It's just cheaper. Lincoln, you're so loud. Birth centers are in generally, are in generally. <laughs> birth centers are in general more comfortable. The setting that you're in, you're being so loud. The room that you're in is comfortable. It is not a hospital with all the hospital equipment with that smell of like sterile stuff and like needles and stuff everywhere. They have queen size bed, not a hospital bed. They have nice dim lighting, which is great when the baby's first born. They're coming from a super dark environment. It's not great to have them in a loud and a bright one. You want like dim lighting, which maybe some hospitals do. Again, I've never had a baby in a hospital and it also probably depends on the hospital, but Brisbane Center in general are just more comfortable. You have access to a tub if you want to labor in the tub or have a water birth. They have like a shower, you have a bed, you just have nice lighting, a more comfortable atmosphere. You can wear whatever you want while you're in labor. You don't have to wear a hospital gown. I'm not sure what hospital policies are on wearing hospital gowns, um, if it's required or not, but at the birth center you could wear whatever you wanted. Nightgown, you could wear nothing at all if you wanted. I just let you out! I have to go let the dog out. Overall, it was just a way more comfortable environment and I feel like that added to the low fear aspect of in the hospital, it's like you kind of feel like it's a medical emergency and at the birth center, it's just comfortable. They were super hands off, so they check the baby as necessary. Again, baby's health is more important than anything but they don't come in and they constantly check you all the time. They're not checking how far dilated you are because that's an increased risk of infection. Anytime they put something up your vagina, their hands, balloons, anything like that, it gives you an increased risk yeah. for infection. I know two people who had their babies at the hospital and developed an infection from it. I'd just rather not, 
you know, just rounding up. I think through my birth, they only checked me twice. Once when I came in and I was seven centimeters, and the next time when I was like, please check me, and I was 10 centimeters, so. That was nice. So those are the main reasons, and I'm sure there's all like a ton more, but those are the ones that I came up with about why I decided to have my baby in the birth center. And it was definitely swayed to the pros of the birth center. Obviously, that's what this video is about. Disclaimer, I am not against hospital births. I think you can have an amazing hospital birth, but I think that you have to advocate a lot harder for what you want, and I think a lot of times the doctors get impatient and do medical interventions that they don't need to do. Anyway. This is not dissing hospitals. I think there's a time and place for hospital births. I think there's a time and place for medical intervention and C-sections. If you had a C-section, do not feel bad about it. If your baby is healthy, if you are healthy, that is all that matters. If your baby was born, that day went exactly how it was supposed to go. Another thing, though, that I do want to add about birth centers, and I want to be really, really, really clear about this, birth centers are not all good. You have to trust your midwife. You have to trust the birth center that you're at that they will transfer you to the hospital when it is needed. That they will not keep you there at the danger or risk for you or your baby. That is so important because sometimes emergencies do happen and you need a midwife that you trust that knows how to handle those situations calmly. They know how to help you in those situations. They know when to transfer you. The birth center I went to, they told me right away reasons why they would transfer, reasons why it would be necessary, and they're like, we need to know that you will comply, that you will go when we tell you to go. They were so good about, they were very good about that, which I think is really important. Because I know a lot of people who, well, they tried to have their baby at home and their midwife and their midwife was not a good midwife and they made really bad decisions and it ended very poorly. Both of them survived, thank God, but they ended up in the hospital for a while after that. I'm not saying all birth center births are good or at home deliveries are good or the right decision. So I want to make that really clear. You need to trust your midwife. You need to pick a midwife in a birth center that really values the safety of you and your baby over a natural birth. That being said, what matters most is not whether you had a vaginal birth versus C-section, all natural versus epidural. The thing that matters most is that your baby is healthy, that your baby is safe, that your baby is born, that you are healthy and that you are safe. For me, I think the best option for low risk pregnancies to be safe, to have the least like likely to have something go wrong, I think that is a birth center. I think that's low intervention, as natural as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps you decide. I hope it didn't offend you in any way. Um, in no way am I trying to make you feel bad about it. I just know so many people who had bad experiences at hospitals that I think could have been avoided. And it's fine, their baby's healthy and that's great, but maybe next baby? They could have a better experience. So before I go on another rant, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, hey, put it down in the comments, things you disagree with. If you want to see more videos like this about maybe natural birth, things like that, hit subscribe. I have a lot more videos for you to check out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear your side of things. Honestly, I love to be open-minded if it's said in a respectful and honest and just really genuine way. I would love to love, love to hear it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Can you wave to the camera? Okay. Hmm. Did you did something go wrong at the birth that made you this way? <laughs> there it is! Oh, okay. Whatever. Good! Can you wave? Wave with your hand. Can you wave? Good job! Wave Good job! Oh, you're my favorite. Let's get Lincoln out of the shop. Moderate. Titan. You're so loud. Or in generally. <laughs> Lincoln, Titan. You're being so loud. It will. Okay, Lincoln.